Greetings, Keishlings. Keishling Prime here with a One Piece Theory video. Today we are doing the Toki Toki no Mi time skip theory. Um, be it, maybe this is not the most original idea out there, but this is my take on it. It's more or less if Hiori got the time fruit. You know, simple as that. Um, now I'll give you a bit of a scenario to how that all works, but just a few key facts that help kind of mesh this theory together. Uh, one of which I'll explain later. That's why it took me so long to come up with this theory because there was like two parts that just didn't want to connect, you know? But uh, basically the um, the common fact that we learned in Dressrosa of how devil fruits in general will uh, re-enter circulation is the user dies, the power reincarnates somewhere in the world, hence why they're so rare, and then someone else can find the power. That's how it works. Okay. But a more specific one was actually brought up earlier in the series in Punk Hazard. We got um, Smiley, the axolotl pet of uh, Caesar Clown. When it died, its power transferred over to a nearby apple. Hence, it became the new devil fruit. So, that's the big point of this theory to how some of this turns out to work. Um, now... That the scenario I told you about, okay, picture me as Sophia Petrillo from the Golden Girls. Picture it, Wano, 20 years ago. Uh, Kozuki Castle being burned to the ground by Kaido and his bucktooth uh, lackey, Orochi. Inside, Lady Toki has just sent the group into the future 20 years. Then, um, prior to that, uh, Kawamatsu has fled the castle with his young charge, Hiori, followed by the death of Lady Toki in the flames. And then, her power reincarnates into a cucumber! And now you're starting to question my sanity because, you know, all they reincarnate into fruits. A cucumber is actually a fruit, my friends. Um, uh, Fruits are scientifically proven to be fruits because they produce from the flower of a plant, while vegetables, on the other hand, produce from the stem or the roots. And guess what cucumbers produce from? The flower. And you're probably wondering why cucumber in the first place is a very, you know, random thing. Not quite. Because of just, you know, several chapters ago and everything, we found out that Kawamatsu is actually a kappa. And you're probably wondering, that doesn't make a lot of sense. If you follow Japanese folklore, Kappas are fans. I mean big fans of cucumbers. So him having one on him at the time would make a lot of sense. The power transfers over to this fruit-like vessel that he would have nearby, you know, from him fleeing the castle. And from there, later on, Hiori, you know, she... She gets hungry, he's going to feed her what he has on hand, which would be the cucumber. She eats it, probably thinks it's gross, they might think it was rotten, because, you know, they don't understand devil fruits and how all that works, so, you know, the awful taste would just be denoted as, oh, it's rotten, and he would freak out, and it's like, oh, she hates cucumbers, no! <laughs> but, um, so yeah, that, that, that's kind of the scenario. Now, be it also because, like I said, they don't understand devil fruits there in Wano. They just think it's all magic powers that just kind of manifest on their own. She may not fully understand the powers themselves. Mostly because are we even sure that they understood Lady Toki and what she did? Like, were they prior to her, you know, samurai jacking them into the future? Did they understand her powers? Or that she had these powers? Or did she use them all the time and they were just aware of this? We don't know. So, uh, if uh, Hiori, you know, is completely unaware of all of this, she could just never have activated the powers in the last 20 years. But then, you have, um, like, say, like a few years prior to the, um, the, the Wano arc, she activates the powers for the first time. She starts developing them, you know, maybe in ways of what Kawamatsu might have heard or something. Like I said, it's because we don't know this, 
It can go a lot of different ways. But say she starts developing the powers and she makes a time bubble. This is where we start getting into the time skip portion of this theory. The time skip is produced in this bubble. So basically it's like the, um, the room of spirit and time from Dragon Ball or the hyperbolic time chamber for, you know, uh, original dubs of the anime. <laughs> uh, that's the one I prefer anyway. But, uh, okay, so due to her maybe not fully mastering this power or whatever, so the time skip would be significantly shorter. Maybe awakening, she could make it whatever she wants. But in this particular instance, it's going to be significantly shorter. Say a week to a month, especially given the time restraints that they have, because like the the hyperbolic time chamber worked on a principle of one day outside was a year inside. Well, because they're on the day of the fire festival training in such a time span, they may get an hour or two, a few hours at the most inside the room, outside, you know, time inside. Like I said, about a week to a, a month at most seems fair, not too overpowered. Now, who would be going into this room to train? Well, obviously the Straw Hats. They can develop their various skills and everything, and I'll detail some of that in a minute. But, uh, but also we could have some other allies, like <clears throat> maybe some of the Red Scabbards. And this could be happening on the trip to Onigashima, you know, on one of the boats. You know. <clears throat> so that all potential uh, potentially could happen there. Um, now what, uh, like the Red Scabbers being a potential ally for this, or even, uh, Tama, and I'll get to her in a second, but, um, starting off like some ideas of what they would be training while in this special time space, we have Luffy, you know, he further refines his like future sight observation, and obviously he would be training his new level of armament. Maybe he combines it even with Snake Man, and then he has like a Viper you know, ray of attacks where he's injecting his uh, armament hockey like, you know, it's been shown to be able to do and then it's just a more easy way for him to focus it and he just does it through his fingers like a viper, you know, would inject its venom. He injects his hockey into a target. Um, Zoro, pretty simple there. He continues to train with Enma, becoming accustomed to it and by proxy, because of how it's affecting his body, you know, it's like a tug of war of hockey and life force. He may strengthen his own armament hockey as well. Maybe even gaining some degree of like what Luffy's doing. And maybe he like can make his sword strikes longer or something. I don't know. Um, Nami, she maybe learns how to fly on Zeus and then she can be, you know, quite the boon for the raid on Onigashima, you know, raining lightning down in a more literal sense. Um, also acting as, like, support. Um, Usopp, you know, with the help of some Wano allies, they gather up some flora that's exclusive to Wano, which would then, you know, real-life terms would be Japanese flora. He, using this accelerated time, along with the principles of his pop greens, because they grow so fast, he crossbreeds these exclusive plants with his pop greens to make new species that he can then use in the future. Um, Sanji, he learns all the functions of the raid suit and then like Usopp and Frankie would like customize it so that they can rebrand it to get away from the Germa and the Vin Smokes and he might be more willing to use and wear the suit. Um, Chopper, he would use the access, like, he would take some samples of the plague bullets from the prison and then, like, build or make antidotes or vaccines so that they can counteract the various viruses that they're due to fight against because, you know, they're going to be fighting Queen and his forces and, you know, Kaido's forces at large probably use the plague bullets on some extent. So it would be good to have something to counteract these effects. Um... <clears throat> Robin is a tough one. I couldn't really think of anything particular that she would do. Frankie, he might develop like a like a special like 
um, amphibious vehicle that looks like a snapping turtle. Now, be it this may be used only in Wano, or it could be used, you know, on the sunny f in future adventures. But basically, it's like the a snapping turtle, like submarine kind of thing. But it can like go on land as well. But like its main function is like it goes underneath ships and then wrecks them by biting holes in the bottom. That would be great to like limit how many people are trying to flee from Onigashima later on in the arc. Or something like that. <clears throat> or to just completely decimate any, you know, Devil Fruit users, mainly all the Smile users, in those uh, boats. <laughs> um, Brooke is another one that was kind of tough. Oh, uh, another idea, just thought of it. Uh, Frankie might reverse engineer some aspects of the raid suit so that they have the cloaking technology later on. I don't know. But uh, anyway, uh, back to Brooke. He's another one that's kind of tough. I wasn't really sure what to do. Maybe he can combine like his um, freezing like nature from hell that he talks about with his sword and combine it with his like ghost apparition. And then he makes like a um, the Yuki Ono, which is like a Japanese yokai again, where... Um, <clears throat> the uh it like brings in wayward travelers in like tundra snowy areas and then it feasts upon them well he could do that and then well, obviously he probably would just scare you but you know he'd lure you in and then attack you or something but also he could just ask for his to see his own panties because you know yukionos are women da 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 I don't know. <laughs> like I said, it is kind of tough to come up with ideas for every single straw hat. And Tama, for instance, using uh, the pop greens from Usopp to supply her with quick and abundance of food, she could then stockpile Dango that could be then used against the, the Smile users, furthering, you know, how she could be used and ideas that we've seen in the series of her, t you know, making them subordinates of hers. And then this would, you know, increase their forces on their side because they seem to be quite outnumbered. So, yeah. Anyway, this is basically uh, the whole idea, you know, just fun little theory idea that, like I said, I've been bubbling around for a while. So uh, let me know what you think. Um, I try to stream on Twitch three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, upload them to YouTube the next day in that cycle. Also, I do a manga podcast with Griever. We try to do that usually every weekend, where we talk about various mangas we've read that week. And yeah. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, Keishlings, roll out! <laughs>